you know, never get so caught up in doing something that um, is cool or hip, maybe like a sound or an effect, but it kind of obliterates an aspect of the song that's really important. I, I'm a I'm a groove guy first. I mean, I know people, when I was working a lot with singer-songwriters, it took me a long time to realize that they listened to the words first. Mm. You know, and and not everybody does that. I mean, there's like they've done studies on this when people listen to music. How many people identify first with the, the beat? Me. I, yeah, I 100%. It, a lot of us who play jazz, that's mm. the way it is. Someone who plays a guitar and sings a song, it's the melody and the, so- and the singing. Yeah. They hear that before they hear anything else. I hear the melody before the lyrics. Yeah. If I like the melody, then me I'll cue into too. the Exactly. The I'm lyrics. the same way. And that's very typical, I think, of, of, of instrumentalists in particular. Oh, okay. Because you know, we, we, those are the things we want. We want groove and we want melody. Melody, yeah. And okay, lyrics are good. Yeah. But if you just wrote a song or if you're someone who listens to a lot of words from songs, then that's going to be really forefront. Yeah. So try not to, to get in the way of that if it's, you're working on a song. If you're working on a on a tune where Matt's playing melody, then yeah, you want to make sure you enhance that that melodic line because that's the next thing that um, the audience is going to tune into. You know, they want to hear what the melody is. They're going to feel the groove, want to hear the melody, um, and then the rest of the rhythm section is sort of the the gel. You know? yeah. I mean, every tune's going to be a little different, but it, that's that's kind of a basic philosophy. Don't 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 mess up the top and the bottom. Uh, which would also include the bass, obviously, because that's part of that groove. So bass and drums on the bottom. If you, if I can make something sounds good with bass, drums, no, no chords or anything else, and the melody line at the top, I know I'm like ninety percent there to a good mix. Because the rest of the stuff, I just find where it should sit, mm-hmm. and that's also the stuff that tends to get flipped around a little bit more. So okay, you know. So that's regardless of how many instruments are in the project that you're well, working on. Yeah, but I try to convince people to use fewer instruments when possible, but arrange them better. Again, the, that overtone series pyramid really becomes important to me. It's like, have we got this this down here covered? And usually it's, you know, this is a lot of octave stuff. Then maybe in the middle we've got more a little more harmonic content mm-hmm. happening, and then the real colors at the top. And if that happens, it's amazing what two, three instruments can create as opposed to yeah. 14 instruments or um and, th- and then i start to categorize things like okay this is this this strummed guitar part is adding percussion um and this you know more arpeggiated and ambient part is adding more color mm-hmm. so i might treat them differently in how they're placed in a mix oh, okay you know, so yeah, it's, I'm not I'm not negating that those things or things that come in and then mm. disappear and stuff like that. Um, but again, you know, to me, it's like there's a shape to songs that has worked, whether we talk about the form or we talk about the uh, kind of curve. You know, are we starting out up here and coming down a bit and then moving up? But we always have sort of this what you used to call the the uh, shout chorus aspect mm-hmm. which we reach this peak and then we start to make its way down to the end or maybe it'll end at that peak but yeah. but those 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 ideas of like what's the shape of it to me dictate when you should be bringing in or out certain elements um so that you're not necessarily making the drums and the bass louder or uh, rhythm guitar or something so you're you're orchestrating sonically exactly gotcha yeah yeah it's always come to me and maybe it's because of my 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 background and training always orchestration and um arranging and pr- the word production to me is just somewhat synonymous with that that's not everybody's definition of it but in a, in effect that's what it is <laughs> you know what i mean you know now so. for like a for like a young producer yeah what's one of like the more nuanced things that are just hard to hear like what's something you have to really train your frequencies ear to? just I- every individual like uh, yeah yeah i mean you should know you should know when you're listening to your mix that i've got an issue around 220 okay okay um you should be able to go uh i need more clarity in the guitar but he's a little raspy at 7k so maybe i'm going to boost 2.5 you don't have to have it exactly. You won't be exact, but you should have a sense of where these things live. 
uh, because otherwise you're just playing willy nilly with. And, I, and then I, that's why I get these mix, you know, home mixes of people with these EQ curves that are insane. I mean, if you see if you see a boost or a cut in any of my records, they're they're tiny. They're tiny yeah. little cut, cuts more than boosts, and boosts tend to be on the extremes. Yeah, you know, it's like I can boost the whole, lift the whole bass a little, or lift the whole top end. But in that mid range there, I'm either trying to find problems and dipping them a bit. Or if I need a little enhancement, they tend to be kind of fairly uh, what we call a wide Q because I want them to kind of travel over, but not not loud, but just have a fairly wide Q so that they they lift in the spot I need, but it's a gradual place. It's more musical for one. That's how all of the great analog EQs work. Like my my APIs, there the, as I dial in more, the Q actually goes from being very pointed. The Q is how how um wide we're 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 upping or decreasing yeah. a, a signal so to it goes it, it actually does this it, it folds out so now i'm raising it less here where i wanted it but i'm also bringing it up gradually on both sides oh. so i'm creating a more musical way whereas if i just did a peak obviously i'm creating a resonance that's going to bark out you know right, in right. certain places right. so i'll tend to cut cut resonances boost musically in a few different ranges mm. so and there's a good reason why you know you go to an evq and it's set for 7k because that's perfect frequency to bring up the snare drum with a fairly uh medium you know um q to it um and oh and or 12k to add all the air at the top stuff like that so cool. you know, yeah. they, they didn't they didn't just make those numbers up they're very musical there's you can again go into the overtone series and harmonics and everything else, but that's to me learn learn what you're hearing, and um, and then apply that to this music that you're listening.